Hi guys, it's Nick with The Whip Shop, and on today's video, I'd like to discuss the importance of rolling every layer of your whip during construction. Now there's a few things that rolling a whip does. Perhaps the most obvious is it makes it look a whole lot better. It smooths out the surface, it defines the taper, and eliminates minor gaps that may accumulate in your plating. Aside from the cosmetic benefits of rolling whips, there's also things that are going on inside the whip that you can't see, which greatly help the flowing of the whip, making it easier to crack. The first one is it distributes the tension of both your plating and your binding all the way down the whip. We are not machines, we are humans. And even though we might strive to pull every strand with equal tension and bind with equal tension all the way down the whip, the reality is it's not gonna be perfect. And it never will be 100% perfect, but what rolling the whip does is it just kind of applies pressure even pressure and distributes the tension of everything all the way down the whip. So if you have some creases here, minor creases there, it'll just help smooth it down and your whip will roll out much better and crack much more easily. Oftentimes I get a lot of people asking me, Nick, do you have to roll a whip? And I reply saying, no, but why wouldn't you? So let's talk about rolling a whip and its ability to eliminate minor gaps in plating. Here's a little illustration that I made for you guys. These straws, these green straws, represent hollow paracord. They represent your plating. Now, this represents a whip that has not been rolled. Notice there are small spaces in between the strands of paracord. Now watch what happens when I apply pressure on top of the strands. This represents the roll. Notice how the gaps in between the straws are eliminated. Now this should not be abused. If you have quarter inch gaps in between your strands, rolling it isn't gonna help you much. Eliminating these gaps doesn't only help with the appearance of the whip, but it also helps with the flow of the whip. If there's spaces in between the strands, there's less surface area and the whip will be more flexible. But if those strands are pressed together, flattened together, there's more surface area, there's more tension, and the whip will be a little bit more springy. How do you roll a whip? What do you do? What do you need? I recommend a hardwood floor or a smooth concrete floor. Carpet will not work, unfortunately. So you need a nice surface, the floor. Some people use tables, but I, I prefer the floor because you can put all your weight on it and get it rolled nice and tight. For rolling the whip, I prefer a piece of wood such as this. You can use a two by four, pretty much any nice, solid, smooth piece of wood will do the job. So the whip's on the floor and then you use this to roll the whip. Now oftentimes pieces of wood such as this can be very slippery and instead of rolling the whip what'll happen is it'll just, just slide right along the whip and it won't do anything. So I recommend giving it a coat of Plasti Dip as you can see that I've already done here. Two things that the Plasti Dip does. First off it creates a nice layer of rubber to grip that whip and roll it nice and smooth. Also what it does is it creates a nice surface that is very easy to clean. If you left this board just like this, uncoated, time after time of rolling the whip, it'll absorb the different oils of your artificial sinew, just some dirt that you can't eliminate off the floor, and it'll get, it'll, you'll see the dirt build up and absorb into the wood, then when you go to roll a light colored whip, it'll transfer all of that dirt onto the whip, and you don't want that. So what this Plasti Dip does is it creates a nice surface that's very easy to wash. Simply hit it with some spray, some light cleaning fluid, let it soak for two to three minutes, and then wipe it, and it comes right off. And that's important to keep your roller clean because you want your finished product to look nice and new. The Plasti Dip can be found at pretty much any hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, and it goes on just like spray paint. Let me show you. All right, so I have here, this is my board that I'm gonna spray. Make sure that it's nice and clean. If uh, you have a rag, just kind of wipe it down, make sure it's nice and dry before you apply this stuff. And you're gonna wanna shake it Take the same precautions that you would with, say, spray paint. It is extremely flammable, so do it in an area that's away from a flame. And just apply it, just like you would spray paint. Now it is going to go on a little bit clear. And when it's all said and done, you're going to want to have given this at least three coats. Make sure you allow 30 minutes in between each coat. Apply this stuff liberally because you want that nice coating. And 
There we go. So the first coat is complete. Let that dry for 30 minutes. While you're waiting for it to dry, practice a little. So it's been 30 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a secondary coat, wait another 30 minutes, give it a final third coat, and by that time, it should be ready for action. Okay guys, here we are out in the garage. I have a nice smooth concrete surface here that we're gonna to use to roll our whip, and our board that we sprayed with Plasti Dip is ready to go. Now a lot of people are torn between rolling the whip before the binding here or after the binding. I like to do it after the binding because all of this artificial sinew is very grippy and it's gonna cause the whip to roll even better and make it less likely to slide around. Before we roll this whip, I like to take a broom and just neaten up a little bit here. Get rid of all the sand and the dust. Also, something I like to do is use a 10 pound weight. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna hold down the end of the whip so it's not flopping all over the place and more importantly, so it's not twisting on us while we roll it. I like to just pull the end right through the hole, like this. And this is the equivalent of somebody just stepping on the end with their foot. If you don't have anybody around, the weight is very good at that. 45 degree angle this is the way I like to do it. Flat down, putting all of my upper body weight on the handle. Always make sure that there's tension here on the whip. If there's slack, it's gonna twist. Now each roll that you do, what I recommend doing is always having a sense of direction. So it's gonna be opposite the weight. You always want to be kind of drifting towards the handle and that'll keep tension on the whip. So I'm always kind of pushing out this way, sort of. Just like this. There's really nothing to it. It's as easy as it sounds, just rolling a whip. Keep in mind, what I'm doing right now, I've already done to the core and the first belly. This is the second belly. I'll be doing the same thing later on with the overlay, which is a little bit different. Working our way down. As I get uh, closer to the end of the whip and the circumference decreases, I'm using less pressure. Don't need as much pressure towards the end of the whip. As a matter of fact, the last couple of inches, I'll just one hand it like this. Really working out this ended belly here. And that's it, that is how you roll the bellies of a whip. Hey guys, I just finished the overlay of the 6 foot 16 flat nylon bull whip, and we're getting ready to roll the overlay. Now if you take a look at this whip, uh, I pretty much just tied off the end of the handle here and cut it, just neaten things up. There is no knot foundation or knots, the transition or at the heel. And that's because when we roll this overlay, we want access to the whole whip. And if we have the knots here or foundations there, it's gonna hinder um, access to the whole surface area of the overlay, the whip. I'm actually not using the concrete floor in the garage because there's a lot of salt from the vehicles and that would not do good for our overlay. So I have this piece of plywood and I'm just gonna clean it a little bit here. I'm gonna make sure that we keep the whip, while we're rolling the whip, we wanna keep it on the surface because this is a very abrasive concrete driveway. We don't want the whip to be rolled on that. Just like we did before, I'm gonna grab our whip, extend it, taking our weight and looping the fall this time. We're gonna be looping the fall through the weight like this. And that weight is gonna hold our whip down when we roll it. So we're just doing the same thing. The whip kind of has a preferred Curve. We want to just take that and just straighten it up nice and gently. Also, we're going to clean off our roller again. And this is just going to give the whole whip a nice rounded finish. Moving 
make our way down. I want to take a minute and just pause and show you how you can already see what part of the whip has been rolled. Look at how smooth it is here. Right here is where we left off. So look at the difference before the roll, after the roll. You can really feel those strands compressing. A lot of whip makers that I've talked to, they say that this is one of their favorite parts of making a whip. It's kind of like the equivalent of staining a nice table that you just finished. It just brings it out. So there we go, our overlay is rolled. Now keep in mind, there's gonna be one more rolling and that's gonna be for the two knots. Let's go tie them. Okay, here I just finished tying the heel knot as well as the transition knot. And because that we've already rolled this overlay without these knots, everything is perfectly flat on the overlay, the last step is to lightly roll the knots. Now note that I said lightly. If you put all of your body weight on these knots, it's gonna damage the foundations. So the light touch is key. We're just gonna start with our heel knot putting about five pounds of pressure. Nice. Right into it. Then I'll take the handle like this, just kind of go around. And that just rounds off right in the middle there and just flattens the top of our knot. For this part, I like to press it in, rotate it, and press it in with my thumb like that. Now we're going to roll the transition knot. Same method, about five pounds of pressure. And for this knot, I like to just kind of angle it in. Notice I'm using the edge here. And it just really, I angle it like this, and it just will tuck those strands in like that. Same for this side, just like this. There we have it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned the importance of rolling your whip during construction. This whip is going to Keisha in the British Columbia. If you would like a whip just like this one, please visit mixedwhipshop.com. Thank you. Oh, it's got mud in it.